tonight on Offset. John Dunsworth joins us in studio for Tyler's last show. It's You're, the beginning and end for you. It's the beginning for me, it's yeah. the end for me. Good. The gods of liquor are in the air because, oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. No guest is allowed to touch me. Mm -hmm. That's physical assault. Mm -hmm. Come like on, Tyler, loosen up. Tell you what, I can help you. Is there any possibility with the Trailer Park Boys coming back? I'm gonna turn my cell phone off, but you can leave yours on. No, I'll turn mine off. No, no. Zero. Zero. Okay. So we've been doing this show for approximately two and a half years now. And this is the show I've wanted since day one. This is the biggest show we've ever done. We've got the legendary, iconic Mr. John Dunsworth sitting on our couch. That's why we're back in the studio right now. We haven't been in the studio in almost two years. We, we had to have a studio to fit your charisma into Ooh, a room. I better. Yeah. Yeah, this is the alpha and the omega, is it? It's everything. It's You're, the beginning and end for you. It's the beginning for me, it's yeah. the end for me. Good. Um, so for years I've been wondering, you know, if I have John Dunsworth mm -hmm. on this show, what would I ask him? And, and I just gotta ask, you know, the question I think that a lot of people mm -hmm. probably ask, and that is, how much of Mr. Leahy is John Dunsworth, and how much of John Dunsworth is Mr. Leahy? Um, well, I teach theater and I try to get my students to be the person that they're playing. Uh, to know them well enough so that they can just... Uh, when I'm studying a character for stage and you have three weeks, there's usually a process I go through where I start call, I, I call the character I'm playing he, and then I start calling the other people I'm playing with on stage in rehearsal, I start calling them my name. And then eventually one day, if magic is with me, then I start to call myself I. And when that happens, you can call it uh, an existential leap, if you like. But it's, uh, it's the difference between knowing what to do and just doing it. And you know yourself as an actor, if you practice a move, sometimes the physical, the act, just, just say the move is this, and the line is, uh, you know, you're looking really beautiful tonight. You know, you don't even have to think about the line. You just touch him on the shoulder and you say the line. That's a great answer. The problem is, in my contract, a lot of people don't know this, I've specifically written that no guest is allowed to touch me. Mm -hmm. That's physical assault. Yeah. So I'm gonna take this opportunity. Just wait a sec, okay. wait a sec. All right. If I'm gonna, gonna get beat for touching you, let me give you some real touches. Congratulations. I don't know what's gonna happen with the show. If you stay, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm out. You wait a sec. Whoa, okay, go ahead, go. I want you to tell me to fuck off. Oh, you want me to, I don't, I don't, I can't curse to you. You can say. I, I can't say fuck off, okay. Mr. Leahy. Okay, okay, I'll tell you what. I can help you. Uh-oh. All right? Oh, no, it's, it's just, all right, it's okay. Oh, my God. You can say anything you want. Do you know why? Because Jesus is busy over in Syria right now, and he's not even watching. You can say anything you want. The gods of liquor are in the air because Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Listen, Randy and I do not have a same-sex relationship. I'd like you to drop over a little later tonight and I'll give you a little drinky poo, okay? Okay? You know what? <laughs> what? At this point... <laughs> what? Hey, come on. As much Tyler, as I... As much come as I on, Tyler. Loosen up. You don't know until you try it, buddy. You just don't know about it. Do you have the, the bumblebee uniform? Is that still available? I, Listen, we had to take it back because it was uh, kind of mustard stains on it, or what they call it. So I'm giving you every opera fucking thing. Uh, you know what I gotta do? <laughs> I've heard for years you've been calling me a shit puppet. Yeah, this is true. So you know what I gotta say to you? What? Fuck off, lady. All right, good. Finally, you've remembered your lines. Tyler, have a great and wonderful career, my friend. Hey, don't go! What up, spoil sport? So, got another interviewer here. Who are you? Dylan. Hey, yeah. you're a lot younger than me. <laughs> 
All right, so a lot of people know you as Mr. Lady mm. from the Trailer Park Boys. So what was that experience like playing that for? It was so lovely. Long? Yeah. Well, it was. I mean, uh, the scripts were great. The director was wonderful, Mike Glattenberg. The other actors, fantastic. The set was incredible, and I just I like working. Yeah. And I find that the story behind the actual shooting is just as interesting. As, but when we're doing trailer parks, the things that are happening around us and the relationships that are going on and the intrigues, they're just as interesting. If you could capture them and share them, the viewership would be easily as interested in, in that, to know who the real characters are. And what yeah, they do. yeah, for sure. So what does the future look like for John Dunsworth? I, I always wanted to travel Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the last six years, I've been everywhere. Nice. And getting paid to do it with people who who just want to hang out with Leahy, right? That's incredible. And they get a little bit perturbed when they want to buy me a drink and I say, I can't, I'm driving. <laughs> hey man, lots of respect, man, lots of respect. You're not a drunk? No. Oh man. So I'm a little disappointed that, that people see me as a, you know, as a poster boy for alcoholism, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I don't, um, I don't espouse drinking, and uh, although I, I drink to excess, I think there's just as, well not as many, but there's several people that have actually, dozens of people over the years who have said, you really helped me with my problem because I could see what I was doing to myself. Now, out of uh, all the people that you work mm -hmm. with on the Trail of Right Boys, who are some of your favorite people to work with on set? Well, Jonathan Torrance, hurts these muscles here for that laugh so much. <laughs> Same with Mike Smith. They are the two icons of, you know, of Canadian comedic expression for mm -hmm. me. Uh, Rob Wells uh, is so good an actor you would not believe. Uh, I mean, you, he plays this dumb goof. But I remember we once shot a scene, you know, crossing the shit line scene. Mm -hmm. He did it three different ways, three ways, all different. One, wow. one that made you cry because it's so full of pathos. One that was the biggest asshole in the world. But uh, I, I love working with those guys. And JP, man, he, what a gentle and wonderful, generous character he is. I, I think last night I did a, um, a reading with Park, and it was a. Uh, testimony for Wendy Lill, who used to be an MLA here, or an MP actually in Ottawa, but she's a very, very fine playwright. And uh, I was working with Joanne Miller, and we used to do radio uh, together. And she, she said after we did our scene together, she said, I really like working with you, John. And I mean, that's better than a standing ovation when one of your fellow actors says that. Yeah. And I found uh, that on Trailer Park Boys, everyone was generous. Like some people have some pissy days and stuff, but they kept them to themselves. Yeah, you know. And um, uh, if I could do it again, of course I would. You know, I I would do it for the rest of my life. And I guess that's what Randy and I are doing. For We're sure. going around sharing the joy with all over the, all over the free world. <laughs> I think that the Trailer Park Boys is um, is has more more fans now today than it did yesterday. Yeah. And I think, if I had to say, I, I could probably say in the millions mm -hmm. of people who really like the show. And I used to go around and ask people, why do you like the show? Because it's so funny, man. You know, I watch it every day. Uh, and I used to say, why? And I've had some really intelligent responses. One woman uh, on the road, I, I, I made a little travel video. You can catch it on my YouTube channel. For part one's there, part two's coming. But, uh, this woman, one woman says, um, Julian is so sad. She said, he, he's like a modern day Hamlet. You know, and those kinds of things that people get from the show. Other people say, this is a show about love, man. Mm -hmm. This is a show about, you know your friends are assholes, but you love them and you stand by them. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many ways that you can look at it. I mean, you, you can say, maybe Julian's not real, maybe Julian's really uh, Trinity's father. And you could say, why is Ray's wife leave the park? Because he caught her with Leahy, and Leahy's really Ricky's father, you know, like, yeah. like uh, Darth Vader, Ricky, you know. that. <laughs> but if you want to, you can do all kinds of things with that show. The possibilities are there because it's, it's, it seems to be 
it seems to be open ended. Mm -hmm. I mean, the characters, although they're sand, you know, they're put into a framework, and and Ray's a jerk who, you know, collects money because he's in a wheel. He's a, isn't very done a wonderful actor. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you ask me who my favorites are. I guess all of them. All you of know, them. and I, I don't really. Yeah, they're all wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Um, so out of the entire series with you know, both the movies and the mm -hmm. TV series, what are some of the highlights of um, the actual show itself? The highlights of Trailer Park Boys? Yeah. I think getting season two was a highlight. Okay. Like saying, being told that we're going back for season two. And then to make a feature length film, mm -hmm. that was a highlight. I mean, the actual doing of it, all of them, I mean, when I think about it, and I think of, you know, hanging upside down in the car or watching the car go over the cliff and all those things, and Randy throwing me in the pool and stuff. Yeah. Oh, Randy, I just have to say a word about Randy Bobandy. Randy's the funniest man. I mean, I, I said how funny that, uh, that uh, Johnny Torrance and Mike Smith are in their real lives. I mean, but Randy on stage, when we have a good audience and he's flying, I have to hold myself from being. I never in my life has ever been a problem. Maybe it's just because I'm getting older. I'm not sure. But, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to touch it there. That's all right. It's like, you're cute. There you go. thing going right now. I have two CDs out uh, of stories that I wrote. Wow. I'm working on a novel right now. It's taken a little while. Uh, I have uh, a feature length uh, script that's being, well there's legalities around it right now, but uh, I have a book that I put out called Dictionary and we put a, th we had a thousand printed hardcover, 124 pages with with illustrations and we sold them out on the internet, 35 <laughs> bucks a pop. Wow. And we didn't give it to a publisher, we kept it ourselves, Brian Cameron and I. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, I think if you do what you love to do and it helps other people, then you can find a happy life. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I, I, I'm trying in my later years, even though I say I feel very young, and I do, I feel very, except when I'm walking up four flights of stairs, I don't feel so young. <laughs> But I, um, I stay busy because it makes me feel vibrant, makes me feel useful, makes me feel happy. Awesome. So, uh, you know, your daughter Molly has just been in Hobo with a Shotgun. Mm -hmm. She was in Mr. D. Yep. And of course, your other daughter is very involved in the film industry. Yep. How do and you so is Zoe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so is Sarah, who yep. played Sarah in Trailer Park. Yeah. Exactly. Now, how do you feel about that, uh, having your own daughters being involved in an industry that you've been so involved in? Well, I didn't push any of them, and as a matter of fact, I offered all of them to help them to go to university, but they find life too exciting to get themselves bogged down in that kind of bullshit. But, um, I mean, unless they actually have a vocation and they want to, but you know what a BA is worth nowadays. Um, probably around $40,000. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, last month, made a little film called Birdhouse, mm -hmm. which is in the can. Awesome. And uh, Molly's boyfriend shot it. We had two people, him and Stefan, and a two-camera shoot. And Xander Rosbro did the sound. He's one of the best sound guys around. Nice. If not the best. And, uh, and my daughters were in it, and I was in it. And awesome. I wrote the script, co-wrote it with a fellow from uh, Texas. That uh, He emailed me one day and said he wanted to collaborate with me someday. I said, let's write a script together. So we wrote this little short script. So. In years to come, you'll be able to see me and my three daughters on, on the screen. And I just made a little film, I was working on it yesterday again, putting some soundtrack to it, uh, of, of a little film that Molly and I are working on, a little series, a awesome. web series. That's awesome. And um, so what's it like? It's wonderful to have them. My son is a, also a great actor, but he doesn't want to do it. No. No, he, he's, uh, he can see through the industry. See, I can't, because I'm stupid. No, I can't. I, I think it's a wonderful... I don't watch TV. I mm. think TV, like I'm watching an old episodes in the night of uh, 24. I'm getting, I've watched them for a couple nights in a row now. And that's uh, very few and far between that I would do that. But I, at the bottom of my bed on my shelf, I've got a little TV and plug the old, it's not a tape, what do you call them? CDs, DVDs, DVDs. DVDs. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm old school. 
but I am. Um, I find it very exciting when I see things like the, the theme of this was that the President of the United States, who I think used to be on Star Trek, the mm. woman, I'm not sure, she, uh, she's she got a big problem because there's an African country where the guys just killed 200,000 people. And the same thing's happening. Yeah. Wow. And I find that when I'm in a, a, a production, especially in the theater, but also in films and way, way back from 30 years ago when I first started doing it, I find that the the coincidences involved between what I'm directing, whether it's Gilbert and Sullivan, which was a hundred years ago, but the, the things that are involved and even the language sometimes and the characters' names even. Yeah. But if you look at the world, you know, what I, like we just had Putin steal the election and Putin steal the election. Like those kinds of things, those parallels, like we got Obama and Osama, I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. Now, uh, you had actually spoke to one of my classes back when I was in film school, and you gave me a bit of advice that actually changed the way I write, personally, and it was that it's write what you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I wouldn't go out and make a cop movie because I have no experience in cop. Right. Um, do you still believe that that's uh, a huge thing? In I've been teaching uh, since then. I've been teaching for a long time. I taught at Dell, and I taught hundreds of places, and I used to run the high school drama festival mm -hmm. and visit the schools and tell them to write about people your age and issues in your community but now I say I still say that but what I, what I say now is that your imagination is the most important tool you have mm -hmm. and if you can engage it in any way whether it's you know visually or manually it it inspires other aspects and, and that if if you you have to create your own life you have to that like you can make your life in this business a tragedy a comedy a farce you can make it a great adventure a love story uh, you can you choose you do you actually get to choose and a lot of people don't know that they they think they're puppets they think that they have to wait for the audition they think they have to wait for the job but you know by doing this kind of thing and making your own web series that you can make what it is that you want to do and you can have hands-on experience and that way you get better but the people who are waiting in line for work they can't get better That's they're true. not writing they're not practicing they're not rehearsing they're just going out to auditions and thinking tell me what you want and i can do it instead of if i can think of what i want then i can do it Absolutely, that's incredible. Um, so other than Trail Bike Boys, you've been working on a lot lately, like Haven, mm -hmm. a few episodes of that. How was that experience for Haven? Uh, I love working. Love working in general. There's only a couple jobs that I've had that I've really uh, been dis didn't like, and that's because usually the director mm -hmm. was an asshole. <laughs> you know, and not that I might not have gotten along with them, uh, but just the fact that, that they're in it for the wrong reason. Like there's a guy right now shooting a film in New Brunswick, and his name is... Uh, uh, Ron Walker and he did go uh, Gods and Generals and Gettysburg and a whole bunch of moves from way back when. The guy is my age and he's still got the fire. Really? He still cares. He still loves his art. But there's so many people who, like, when people come to me and they say, John, I want you to help me with this audition or I want to go to Hollywood, can you help me get there? And so I said, why do you want to be in the biz. And if they say, well, I want to hang around with the cool people, or I want to make lots of money, or I want to be famous, I can go, you know, mm -hmm. get out of my, I, I, I think, I've never wanted to be rich. I never needed to be famous, but I always wanted an audience, and one person, you, will do. And if I can have 500 people in the seats at Neptune Theater and be part of a play there, it's thrilling. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It's just the way I made, I guess. I once, uh, I won't tell you the radio station, but I once spent $5,000 worth of credit on a radio station locally to, uh, to promote uh, an auction that, that I was having, a charity auction, because I do an awful lot of the, you know, auctions, because yeah. I love to be an auctioneer, mm -hmm. and uh, an MC and stuff like that. I'm doing a symphony in Nova Scotia on Monday night, and wow. last night I did Park, and this week I did a thing at the library, but I never say no, mm -hmm. and I meet such wonderful people. But I spent five grand on this thing, and uh, during the auction, it was a wet and cold night, and I said, uh, how many people here uh, heard the ads on such and such a radio station? Not one had come because of it. So how much money did we earn? None. <laughs> well, not enough to pay for the five grand we put out. <laughs> but uh, it was my money anyway. But um, yeah, the thing that we did at the library that, this last week, they sent out 400 flyers, mm -hmm. and, or more than 400 flyers. What was it for that? I'm not sure. It was the Halifax Library. And the guy put it up on his YouTube and 
hundred people told him they were coming. On the night there was me and two other panels and the moderator mm -hmm. and two people who worked at the library and one person in the audience. And you know who that was? Who? Bill. <laughs> wow. The famous Bill. That's you cool. all, you guys all know Bill. <laughs> Bill is that ubiquitous person that always shows up. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. So is there any possibility with the Trailer Park Boys coming back, TV or film? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's always a possibility. Um, Mike Clattenburg has just finished a film uh, called... Uh, is it The Men Who Move Funer? Men Who Move Funer, yeah. yeah. I think that was one of his titles that he had earlier, but it's coming out soon. And I, I have every reason to think that that'll be as brilliant as his other works. Uh, and Johnny Torrance just finished up his series on TV. God knows where he'll, he'll turn up again. Uh, the boys are over in Australia right now, mm -hmm. uh, Ricky, Julian, and Bubbles. And, uh, and uh, I mean, every single one of us are open to it happening again, I think. Uh, I think the producers and Clattenburg are, um, are holding the cards close to their chest. I don't know if they would like to do it or not, but if they do, I'm there. And uh, I, I can see no reason in the world why in the next little couple of years, somebody says, okay, let's go. But nobody's told me that. Cool. Now, who would win in a bridge uh, tournament here? Would it be Mr. Leahy or John Dunsworth? Well, bridge is a four-handed game. So if it was Mr. Leahy and Randy playing against me and my bridge partner, Brian Arsenal, we'd beat them so bad they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, this is the legendary John Dunsworth. This is Thanks not quite time. a legend. But happy to be here. Perfect. Good. Oh, Danny boy. The pipes, the pipes are calling.